بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين I was asked to say something. There's no words to say other than the terms chosen by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a nearly identical predicament. The messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam visited Ammar and his parents radiallahu anhum being tortured in the hot sun of Mecca. No one can imagine the hurt in the heart of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looking at them. The soft-hearted man sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was concerned over his ummah that was still not born. He was concerned sallallahu alayhi wa sallam over his ummah like me and you that only existed back then in ilm, in, in ilm al-ghayb. The man who used to raise his hands weeping, Allahumma ummati, Allahumma ummati, in concern over an ummah, he still didn't see. Now, before his eyes, he sees the few believers in him being tortured in the most savage, ferocious way. Among them was Um Ammar radiallahu anha, the frail old woman, the first martyr of Islam. It may have been at a time where he couldn't secure their release fully, but he never neglected them, not even in that weak point. From reading the narrations, he didn't just casually pass by Ammar, and his parents radiallahu anhum. He went out of his way to visit those who were being tortured. And a lesson from that is مَا لَا يُدْرَكُ كُلُّهُ لَا يُدْرَكُ جُلُّهُ Whatever you can't gain entirely, don't disregard it entirely. You can't secure the release then do something else you're able to. Raise awareness for them. Write to them. If they were able to read and listen to my lectures, and I'm not sure how that's possible, that's why I asked the, the brother if it was authentic, and he said it is. If they're able to listen to that, then they will read your words in support of them. And that means more than you can imagine to a captive. Their families who don't denounce them need support as well. In the weakest of his times, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to show them support as every Muslim should do. Uthman radiallahu an said, the Messenger would take me walking towards Ammar and his parents radiallahu anhum being tortured in Mecca. And he, when he saw them, he said, Sabran ya Aba Yasir wa ala Yasir fa inna mawa'idakum al-jannah. Isbiru ala Yasir mawa'idukum al-jannah. Abshiru ala Yasir mawa'idukum al-jannah. His visit, his words were to support and inspire them to uplift their spirits and their iman. Only captives know the feeling of a nice word they hear or a letter they receive while they're lonely in their captivity. And a lesson from this as well, and it's, it's not a lesson I ever read before. It's that it's not only an imanic boost to the captives, but it's a solace for those who care about them as well.
It's a solace for the real men of this ummah. The men and women who spend sleepless nights agonizing over their sisters in captivity. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was sent by Allah. The most chosen man. Yet he endured that pain. And at a time he couldn't directly free them. He agonized over women captives as we do today. And he is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to show them they're not forgotten. They're not neglected. He wanted to uplift their morale, and boost their iman, and do what he is able to do at that time. Don't get it wrong. Do not get it wrong. The words encouraging sabr, isbiru ala yasir, were not coming from a defeatist. Our Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the definition of bravery and courage. Asbiru ala yasir wasn't in the context of what the governments of the West want their imams to do. I read an article a long time ago and I may have mentioned it in one of the old lectures that their imams are encouraged to tell those who express sympathy about Muslim causes to have sabr and make dua. Go make dua and have sabr and forgive and snore it, snore it away. It's said in the context of calming people down so they can feel good about themselves and towards Muslim causes that they sympathize with. Because it's natural when you belong to an ummah to feel for the ummah. But the way the West and their scholars want it, it's aimed at removing the guilt of forsaken oppressed Muslims. They add forgiveness in matters where there's no forgiveness. There's absolutely no forgiveness in our women being in captivity. Or for example, like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being mocked. The same Imam could never withstand the slightest indirect criticism. Want you to forgive and pray for those who mock Rasulullah and take your sisters as captives. Our sisters tortured in prisons, go make dua, have sabr and forgive. The oppressor turns to Islam. Islam erases the past. It erased the killing of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's beloved uncle. But those who transgress in their kufr and oppression, and not just in one area, where the question is from, but also like in Palestine by the Zionists, or in Egypt, or in China, or in Maghrib, or even in the United States. We say sabran, we say make dua, and we say it will not be forgiven nor forgotten.